Welcome to our first video on the parts of a neuron. After watching this video, you should be able to do the following three things. One, draw the three types of neurons discussed. Two, identify the direction of information flow for each type of neuron. And three, use the anatomy of a neuron to make predictions about its function. There are two main types of cells in the nervous system, neurons and glia. Neurons are the most recognizable cell type, and the majority of this course will focus on neurons. Neurons are cells that are specialized to transmit information through both electrical and chemical means. The first section of the course will focus on how neurons use ion gradients to propagate signals in the form of action potentials. The second section of the course will focus on how neurons use chemical neurotransmitters to pass along their signals to other cells. The second main cell type are called glia. These include oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, and Schwann cells. There's an ongoing debate as to the number of glial cells per each neuron in the brain. Textbooks often quote about 10 glial cells to one neuron, but numbers seem to vary by brain region and the method used to count the cells. In any case, glia perform important functions in the brain, including providing structure and creating the myelin sheath that speeds action potential conduction velocity. Schwann cells provide the myelin in the periphery, while oligodendrocyte cells provide the myelin sheath in the central nervous system. Astrocytes, shown here, help to set up the blood-brain barrier. Glial cells can also regulate synapses and neurotransmitters, respond to injury, and likely perform many other vital functions that neuroscientists are only now starting to uncover. The three main parts of any neuron are the dendrites, cell body, and axon. The cell body, or soma, shown here, is the metabolic center of the cell and the main site of protein synthesis. The dendrites and axon are the two processes that come out of the cell soma. Dendrites receive information from other cells and form the postsynaptic area for many incoming synapses. Dendrites often contain dendritic spines, shown here, which increase the surface area for synaptic connections. Each dendritic spine only receives information from one axon. This isolated part of the dendrite then allows for a synaptic microenvironment that in many cases can be quite plastic and is thought to be involved in learning and memory. The axon is the process that conducts the action potential towards other cells. The action potential is initiated at the axon hillock travels down the axon to the synaptic sites, shown here, or presynaptic boutons. And from the presynaptic bouton, vesicles of neurotransmitter are released, and the neurotransmitter can act on the postsynaptic cell. There are three main types of neurons, bipolar, pseudounipolar, and multipolar. The normal direction of information flow is from the dendrites to axons in all three cell types. The morphology of the different types of neurons are suited for their physiological functions, and we will discuss a specific ac uh, example from each cell type. Multipolar cells are the most common neuronal cell type in the nervous system, but their morphology can vary widely depending on their function. For instance, Purkinje neurons, like the one shown here, are found in the cerebellum. They have enormous dendritic trees that receive around 150,000 synapses. In contrast, motor neurons, which are also multipolar cells, have a much smaller dendritic tree and only receive around 8,000 synapses. Bipolar neurons contain essential soma, shown here, and two processes, a dendrite here, and an axon here. Many bipolar neurons are sensory neurons and are found in the retina or the olfactory system shown here. Pseudo-unipolar neurons have a single axon that branches off to go in both the peripheral direction and the central direction. All the sensory neurons with cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglion are pseudo-unipolar cells. These sensory cells have specialized dendrites 
that can respond to a specific sensory modality. For example, the muscle stretch receptors shown here have dendritic processes that wrap around muscle fibers. When the muscle is stretched, the mechanical deformation of the membrane causes the generation of an action potential, which travels towards the spinal cord. That concludes our first lesson. Please remember to complete the online quiz.